We asked a Facebook question today. Who would you like to see as the Browns coach to start the 2020 huh. season? Bud, do you have a thought? You said I, uh, probably uh, Freddie. No, uh, who would I like to see? Yeah. No, I think the Browns will bring him back, and oh. I think we'll have, be having the same discussion next year at this time. All right. But I would good. hire Ron Rivera. As would I. Jay Slagle says somebody who's a plug-and-play coach with a short learning curve, no more training on the job. I think we can agree with that. Good point. Gerard Morelli, an experienced head coach with NFL credentials. Mike McCarthy would be great, but I don't know if Dorsey left Green Bay on good terms with him. Kevin Pyle says Rivera, as long as he finds a primary, a primarily new staff of assistant coaches and doesn't bring uh, much of the staff from the Panthers. Rick May says either McCarthy or Rivera would work for me. Just make sure that he's not calling the plays. That's what an offensive coordinator is there for. Dennis Davis says the coaching turnover madness has to end. Give Kitchens another year and take away his play calling ability. Uh, Andy Mees, see if Greg Williams is willing to come huh. back. After all, the Browns did respond under him last uh, last season and were far more disciplined under him than they were under good old boy Freddie. Gregory Mees, Lincoln Riley, who has proven to be an offensive genius in his work with Baker, open up the pocketbook and give him whatever he needs to uh, have him here as uh, to have him as our f uh, future. Barbara Mooney, I agree with this wholeheartedly. Less would be more creative, winning, skilled with the game clock. <laughs> I've said this for decades. Uh, Barbara. <laughs> She's absolutely right. Um, you know, the best, the, best uh, Facebook entry we've ever had. The, the Lincoln, the college coach idea, um, I, I'm not dead set against it because to me, you're bringing in a guy who's been a head coach at a major program. Somewhere. You know, the, the difference with Kitchens was that he had never been a head coach anywhere. He'd been, never really been on, uh, above a position coach for all, uh, all but three months of his career. All right. It seems that uh, Urban Meyer is sort of putting himself out there with now with Washington, before that with uh, Dallas. He's in our own backyard. Any desire to have him as the head coach of the Browns? I certainly would talk to him. Now, the, here's the, you know, here's what I, I wouldn't want to see happen. I think John Dorsey uh, has done a good job as a talent evaluator in general. N not as good as we thought. No, he's missed some. Obviously, he's missed some. Um, he's made some, some uh, deals with guys that, you know, he shouldn't probably have brought on guy you know, Question Callaway, character. guys like yeah. that. That, um, so to me, if you bring in that king of college football, and I would put Urban in that category, you're probably going to blow Dorsey out because Dorsey's going to say, "Wait a second, where's my? You just usurped my power here." Right. So now, are you ready to start all over again with a guy like Urban, who would then have to find his own personnel guy and? That seems a little drastic to me. There, there was a, a column in USA Today yesterday, the day before, giving all the reasons why Urban should not want to be in the pros. And one is he wouldn't want to work for Dan Snyder and maybe not Jerry Jones, although Jerry keeps his guys around for a long time. Yeah. But he also berates them on the radio on his radio show on Monday, no matter what he does. But Urban's great one great strength is recruiting, which is a downfall of many college coaches, but he seems to thrive on it, but he won't, he wouldn't have that main duty within the NFL. Yeah, and I, you know, would you put Haslam in that same category with Snyder and Jerry Jones? I mean, what has Haslam ever done in this league to Nothing. be considered a good owner? The difference is he's not going to, he's not going to meddle with once a guy gets on he, the job. He sort of did before, but this, this time around he's kept out of it. Yeah, I think he's kept out of it, and I think he, he, he sort of moved into the background last year during the coaching search. Right. There was a, People remember there was another, you know, part of the front office uh, with Paul D. Podesta and the analytics guys who, who preferred, we think, Kevin Stefanski, the offensive coordinator from the Minnesota Vikings. You know, maybe they're the voice that's now in Haslam's ears saying, see, we told you. Is Podesta still D. involved? D. Podesta is still there, but I, my understanding, and I might not have this right, but I've been told by somebody that they thought this was the last year of his of the contract. contract. with. So I, I don't know what that means. I think he is – he's – had impact elsewhere in the organization uh, with um, sales and yeah, marketing. they brought they brought an analytics model to a lot of different parts of the organization, not right. just like a how football. much popcorn to put in the bag. There you like, go. No, I'm serious. Things like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of things like that that they that he's had hands in, had a hand in. But uh, I I don't know. I you know I'd be tempted to bring in somebody if you're going to keep. Beckham together. You're going to keep Beckham and Landry together. You're not going to make any moves there. Uh, I think this is a quarterback who needs to be coached by a, a I don't want to say a disciplinarian uh, head coach, but 
he needs to be coached. Well, we're going to talk about that a little later. Okay. Who, who his quarterback, who the quarterback coach is now versus who it was last year while Freddie was uh, the running backs coach and then mm -hmm. took over as the head coach.